Hello, everyone. This is uh, Mark Young, and thank you for joining uh, our 3D Experience Widget Fundamentals webinar. Um, we're going to give everyone another minute before we officially start. So uh, please stand by. All right. So once again, thank you everyone for joining this 3D Experience Widget Fundamentals webinar. This is uh, Mark Young and my colleague Dia Persoon will be conducting the webinar. Um, we'll be holding all questions. We want interactive participation, but we will hold in all questions to the end. If you have questions, please type them into the uh, question box within uh, the GoToWebinar meeting and we'll we'll address them at the end or you can always contact us for any follow-up questions um dia please uh, move to the next slide all right a quick overview for those of you who are not familiar with xlm solutions we consider ourselves a complete uh, plm solution provider and we specialize mainly on the the so plm product so that's you know, the 3D Experience platform, both the Cloud, 3DX Connect, 3D Experience Connect, and the on-premise version of, of 3D Experience, um, which was a little bit known as Inovia before. We also provide expertise around the SolidWorks PDM product, the legacy Inovia solution, Inovia Smart Team, and then we're doing work with NetVibes or Exalead on some of their uh, solutions like OnePart. Um, we've been in business since 2005, so we bring 18 years of experience providing a PLM, PDM expertise to the industry, and we really pride ourselves for being, uh, you know, on the forefront of uh, having great business and technical expertise around PLM. We're both a Dassault business partner and what's considered a SolidWorks certified professional service company. So we're recognized and certified for providing services around the uh, DSO products. Um, again, we really provide <laughs> ourselves on uh, continuing excellence through research, making sure we're up to date on all the best practices uh, within the PLM or digital transformation uh, uh, area. Um, always looking at the latest technologies out there to provide the uh, best solutions to our customers. And, you know, we really provide, you know, all aspects. Today we're gonna talk about widgets and the fundamentals of widgets within 3D Experience, but we really provide all aspects of PDM, PLM, you know, implementations, everything from discovery workshops, site assessments, general implementations, customizations, which, when we get into creating your own widgets, you know, we'll probably be a part of customizations. And then uh, integrations to other systems like ERPs or other enterprise systems, data migrations, and then training and support. We have a lot of cross industry expertise, you know, everything from automotive to aerospace, medical devices. Um, and, you know, we can provide a further list if needed. And then, you know, extensive. Uh, technical expertise, you know, everything from operating systems, Windows, Linux, various programming languages, and various customization uh, uh, expertise within the uh, 3D Experience platform. So we can uh, move to the next slide. Um, part of this, we're, we're doing this webinar with our uh, subsidiary in Europe, Excellent Europe. DIA is based in Toulouse, France. So those of you who do not know it, we started XLM Europe in uh, 2021, so we've been in business now for two years, um, and you know we're 
growing and expanding our, our footprint within uh, Europe. Um, you know, very similar to uh, XLM Solutions, XLM Europe is providing PLM uh, consultation and services and everything that we're doing through uh, integration and customizations, helping companies fulfill their digital twin process, merging various um, companies and 3D experience solutions together and data migrations. And you know, from an industry point of view, their, their key industries that they have expertise in are you know, aerospace, industrial equipment, energy, automotive, and pharmaceuticals. So with all that being said, uh, we're done with, let's say, the uh, introductions. We're going to hand it over to Dia to really get into the meat of the uh, widget fundamental webinar. So uh, go ahead, Dia. Thank you, Mark. So yes, so I'm Dia. I'm working with uh, XLM Europe. So as a solution architect. So today we'll, uh, I'll share some of my knowledge that I have uh, related to widget fundamentals. So let's start uh, if you're ready. So uh, 3D experience comprises of uh, multiple uh, platforms and services. And today our main focus will be on the 3D dashboard service that you can find here. The 3D dashboard service, it is the main entry point of the 3DX platform. It allows you to navigate to the other applications uh, via the compass. It provides, um, it brings you information from different sources uh, into one customizable page or widget. And this page can be shared uh, among your platform members. 3D dashboard also allows you to manage uh, your dashboards. That is, you can create or um, and share your dashboards with uh, different groups of users. So you can uh, create it as per your need. That is, uh, each user can have its own personalized view, or you can have one dashboard shared uh, within a group of users in your system. Here is a view of uh, a dashboard. So. To show you better, I'll go on the platform itself and um, show you the different components of the dashboard. Okay. So let's see, I'm in here. So when I load the, the 3D dashboard, normally I can see here it is mentioned 3D dashboard. I have a dashboard already loaded here, which is called uh, my first dashboard. From here, you can manage it. If you are an admin user, you can manage your dashboard, duplicate it, share it, or delete it even. And if I want to create one dashboard, so I'll just use the menu in here. Any user can do it normally. So you create by clicking the plus. So let's say I'm creating one here. Once you create it, it switches to the one that you created and there is a tab that is pre-loaded for you. You can rename your tabs. You can also create new tab in the same dashboard. And once your tab, uh, tabs are ready, you can uh, place your applications or your widgets on that uh, dashboard. So let's say I'll just add up one application in here. So this application, once it's here, you can move it as you want. You can resize it or you can fit it on the dashboard also. So that is just uh, an introduction to the dashboard. So let's continue. To introduce you uh, the concept of widget. So widget is uh, just a simple and easy to use application. It can derive information from different various sources. In our everyday life, we, uh, we are using widgets. Let's say for example, in our mobile phone, we can have uh, mm -hmm. Some examples are the daily weather app or the notes app or the news feeds app that you see every day. So you encounter widgets every day. So 
so in the in the 3D experience, we also use uh, widgets, the mechanism of widgets. They are a specialized application that are implemented uh, using standard uh, web standard technologies like HTML, JavaScript, or CSS. 3D dashboard widgets, they are uh, standalone and independent of other widgets, but it can only be hosted on the 3D dashboard. You cannot use your widget outside of the, uh, of the um, 3D dashboard because it depends on the framework of the 3D dashboard to be loaded. Some of the features of a widget, so normally you can move it and position it uh, wherever you want on your dashboard. You can size it as you want. You can configure it with uh, different options using preferences. We'll see that later in the slides. You can share it among a group of users, or you can make it public also. You can uh, remove it from a dashboard. The widget itself, it, um, it is a way to provide, to give control to your user to manipulate the widget as he wants. He can um, personalize its own view on the dashboard using those widgets. The, the sources, the, the, um, the content of the widget, uh, it can come from, uh, two, it, it has two um, ways of feeding uh, the content. One is uh, fetching the information internally, internally meaning from 3D experience itself. It can be from uh, any other service like 3D space or um, 3D stream, for example. So the objective of, uh, of uh, loading the content here, it's about um, fetching data or communicating with the other services to update the data. The external, you can also feed the uh, information uh, from external sources, like uh, you can even load YouTube on, on your widget. Uh, what, another example uh, that I can share is uh, you can, for example, uh, load um, a web application uh, from another system, for example, SAP, for example, you can load it in your widget also with a proper configuration. So you, here you have two ways of uh, it's quite flexible. You are not restricted only um, to, uh, to 3D experience services only. So 3D dashboard, it can, um, as you've seen, it's quite flexible, uh, the, how, how you want to place your widget in a dashboard. So it can, you can view it in multiple ways. So you can have in only one widget on a window or you can have multiple widgets on a, on a particular dashboard. So let's go and see that. So that is an example that I just showed before, one widget on one dashboard. Let's try and add up more um, multiple widgets in one uh, dashboard. So let's say, in here, so this, this application has already two widgets loaded. So here it is. Now I can also use the fit to fit it to the screen. I can still uh, place it and move it as I want. So that is an example of uh, multiple widgets on, uh, on one, in one dashboard. So this is some examples in the slides for following the slides that of being um, that where we continue. We have um, the what I just shown you: one widget in one window, many small widgets in one window. So here we have one dashboard and five widgets in the same window. So the widget architecture, how, um, what happens when you load a widget on, in the 3D dashboard? So once, um, first the 3D dashboard loads the widget application. Once the application is loaded, it will fetch uh, the uh, source code uh, from the uh, 3D dashboard server. 
then it will load its uh, UI components, its user interface. Once this is loaded, then it can exchange data to the other services via, it can be via uh, web services, RESTful web services here. Or you can also implement business logic in GPOs. So this is how the architecture, to put it in a simpler way, how it works. Um, here we are showing you just a basic example of a widget that is uh, implemented uh, using um, plain uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. The aim of the of the widget here was to update uh, a, the legacy revision of an object. So if you see here, the widget itself contains a droppable uh, element where you will be able to drop uh, an object that you will search in the 3D experience and drop it in here. Once it is dropped, you can have a table, you will have a table loaded with the information of the data. And uh, here for the business seat, we needed to, uh, pr to provide a list of values uh, that you will, um, that the user will choose. And once uh, he chooses the value, he can proceed to update the, um, here, for example, it was the drawing to update the revision of the drawing. This widget uses native and custom web services. So native is whatever is available from Dassault system. And the custom uh, web service was implemented because um, it was uh, for the update of the revision, we needed that uh, 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 this kind of uh, web service because it doesn't exist in the, in the OTB uh, components. So let's go and see, just to give you a view of the widget. So in here, I, in my dashboard, I have uh, two native applications where I have my search result in here. And this is the widget where you will drop your object. So I'll just drag and drop the, wood, the object in here. It will load my data, so the drawing. And in here, I can select the, um, the revision that I will, I will, choose, I will want to, to place in my object. And once you click on OK, it will update that object. So currently, I cannot test it on this platform. But normally, what it will do, it will go and update that object and change its revision. Okay, so now you have your um, you have your widget design. So just to give you a um, a sample, uh, the sample of the code, just to give you some basic information of what is important for you at first to load your widget. So you will need uh, something that is necessary is the HTML file that is everywhere in your whichever framework you're using the HTML file is important we'll see that afterwards in when during the explanation why so this is the HTML and this is the JavaScript code the main JavaScript code that will be loaded so in the HTML one uh, thing one um, configuration that allows you to define it as an object and as a widget object is the, this line here, line three. It's the namespace of uh, uh, the widget coming from NetVibes. We'll give you a bit of context afterwards uh, about NetVibes and widgets. So this will define it as a widget. Then you will have just a basic HTML having uh, your import of your JavaScript or your CSS files. You will also have uh, this component here, which is called widget preferences. Those are preferences that will be add, that will add up to your widget to provide more options. We'll also show that afterwards. And then you will have your script where it will contain, just to understand here, it will contain a method uh, that would be launched uh, once the widget is loaded in the system. So in here you have a method execute widget code that is being loaded from this main uh, JavaScript file. 
And if you see in the JavaScript file, the first method that is there is the execute widget code. Inside, what is important for the widget to be uh, loaded, it's uh, the events that you're adding in the widget instance. So in each, uh, in your main JavaScript file, you will have to have uh, the, um, the triggers being added. The one uh, important, the um, one that is mandatory is the load uh, event. So you will see at the end, you have an event being added in your widget instance. So by doing widget.add event on load, or load is the type of the event, you are giving also a function to uh, load at the um, once it is triggered, this event is triggered. So in here, once uh, that is the piece of code for the widget I just showed before, once this event is uh, triggered by the dashboard, the widget will be loaded and this uh, function unload, which is defined in here, will be launched and feed uh, the UI, the user interface of the widget and proceed with uh, all the different behaviors that are needed for the widget. So that was just to give you a, a simple example here. Moving on, um, now that you have uh, implemented the code, you will need to create an, uh, an application on the 3D dashboard to, to create your widget instance. So to do that in 3D experience, it is um, you need to create an additional app. This is this is how it is called in 3D dashboard. So how you do that? It is um, you you will need to use um, uh, a user that has the platform manager role. Once you you um, you connect you authenticate yourself as this uh, user, you will uh, need to navigate to the platform management dashboard. Uh, then there you have multiple tabs and then under the members tab, you have the option to create an additional app. And there, once you create, uh, once you open this form, you have this view. This is the create additional app um, of, a, of a widget. So what you need to define in here is the name of your widget. That is the name that you will find um, when you search in, in the compass. That is uh, the name that will appear for your widget. Then the long name is just for the tooltip. Then you select the type. The type here should be widget since you are creating a widget. This part, this is the source code URL. So you're mapping your widget instance with the source code that you deploy on your server. So here you have the URL of your widget platform. Then the folder, uh, where your widget is, uh, the source code of your widget is uh, deployed. And then the HTML of your uh, widget. So that the HTML is the main entry point of the widget. That, that is uh, who is responsible to load the widget. So that's why we configure the HTML. Then you have the configuration file URL. So this is related to widget preferences. So in here, you can also provide a URL with a JSON file that you provide to add preferences to your widget. Then you have also a checkbox that um, uh, allows you to set it to uh, for a public access that every, every member can see the widget created. And if you uncheck it, it would be a private widget that you would need to configure afterwards uh, and assign it to a group of users in order to access it. And once the widget is created, you can uh, view it uh, from your compass and use it from there. So if we go on, uh, just to show you uh, the platform management uh, dashboard, so normally you will go uh, in the list of dashboard. Here you will find the platform management. Once you click on it, you will have um, multiple tabs where the, um, the creation of additional app will be under members. And here is the uh, additional app section with a list of all the additional apps you created. This is the button to create your additional app. Here you will have to cho choose between uh, uh, those uh, options. So it will be widget. 
an example of um, one uh, one additional app that is created. So here you see there's the name, the URL. From here, you can update this additional app and you can also remove it from here. So one thing that I missed is that you can also uh, change the icon of your widget. So you can import an icon and, and change it from uh, uh, from here. So uh, in, uh, in 3D experience, you have a lot of web services that are provided. So related to additional app, we have also a list of web services that exist that allows us to uh, manage those additional apps. So you have one for adding an additional app, for listing all the additional app, for updating an additional app, to fetch an additional app, and to delete an additional app. So those um, web services can be used to automate the creation of your additional apps. For example, let's say, um, uh, in your pipeline, you can add uh, this uh, an application that will each time your widget is being deployed, you can launch uh, those web services to update uh, or delete or uh, create new additional apps. And of course, uh, you will need uh, an admin user that uh, a, an authentication being done uh, uh, in your application uh, via 3D Passport in order to uh, to use those web services. The widget source code. So uh, the, the primary location of OOTB widgets, native widgets that exist in 3D experience is uh, here, 3D space web apps. So it looks like that. You have multiple folders uh, that maps to uh, different widgets. For test purposes, uh, this, uh, this folder, if you don't have an external server for your widget, you can use this, uh, this uh, repository to test your widgets, but just for test purposes. And this is applicable only for on-premise environment. On cloud, that won't be possible because we won't have access to those, uh, those components. So for the final, uh, for the customer deployment, uh, widgets um, should be deployed in an external uh, web server, as long as a 3D dashboard can access that server with the proper configuration. The reason for externalizing your deployment is to better support upgrades of a 3D experience platform. So uh, here it means like, if you have customization uh, built in your 3DX uh, 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 platform, it's um, it's better. It's um, it avoids uh, like uh, more work um, during upgrades that will uh, occur for 3D experience. So it, it um, if you if your platform is clean, so you know you will have a fluid uh, upgrade of your 3DX platform. It prevents the use of components not supported by DASO. So if you are, let's say you are deploying in this, uh, in this repository, so you will have access to more components that are not uh, necessarily available publicly and authorized by DASO. So you have a risk of using components that may go obsolete if you are externalizing in the future. Uh, if you have your own server for your widgets, you're free to manage this uh, server as you want without impacting the components of 3D uh, experience servers. And uh, it, is, it is a plus if you externalize uh, your widgets, it, it will be uh, a fluid transfer to the cloud afterwards if you're moving to the, to the cloud system. So for deploying uh, your uh, widgets, uh, as we've seen before, widgets are specialized uh, applications that are implemented using web standard technology. So the HTML, uh, HTML file is considered as the entry point of the widget. I also call it, uh, it's the intermediary between the widget application and the source code. The JavaScript file, the, it can be one or more JavaScript file. 
gives you control. Uh, um, it give, it controls the widget state and, and behavior. The CSS, of course, is for formatting and styling the user interface. So the widget, as we've seen, is an application in 3D experience. It needs to be created in the on the 3D dashboard, like we've seen before. You need to create an additional uh, app. And how to deploy? It's very simple. You will need to create a folder for your widget on the server, place all your source code in that folder, and then create that additional app and map your uh, additional app to your source code. Now, uh, some, to, some uh, uh, development tools uh, that uh, we recommend. Uh, so we will, when implementing widgets, we will focus mainly on web development and Java development. So for widgets, for uh, for the editor, you can use any text editor. It can be just simple Notepad++. But if you want something more powerful, that is uh, that support uh, uh, your language and that is uh, that is your development process. Uh, we recommend to use Visual Studio Code. It has lots of extensions and can support multiple languages. For debugging uh, your widget, uh, you use uh, just the web browser console. Just by activating the developer tool uh, of your uh, web browser, you can access uh, your source code and debug it from there. For the web services, uh, so it's a Java web services development. For addition, you, addition of your code, you can use any uh, ID. It can be a Eclipse ID, IntelliJ, or uh, any anything that you have in mind. You can even use Visual Studio Code, since it uh, supports uh, other languages also, other than uh, JavaScript. For testing your web services, you can uh, use Postman. It's a quite powerful tool also that uh, where you can build and design your request uh, easily and uh, track the responses uh, uh, in, in the application itself. It also helps you to build a collection of uh, requests that you can run at once and get your result uh, based on your requirements. So now talking about the technical design of widgets. So as we've seen before, widgets are based on, H on uh, standard technologies, uh, web standard technologies, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, let's see what is important um, in order to construct your widget. So one important protocol that is uh, important for any widget is the UWA protocol, which is a universal web app. To give you a, a bit of context before uh, um, explaining uh, this protocol, Free Dashboard is actually an adapted version of the dashboarding tool from NetVibes that was acquired by Dassault in 2012. Net, actually, NetVibes used uh, the UWA protocol for its dashboarding intelligence. So UWA is uh, just a simple and elegant web app framework that will help you to build the beautiful applications uh, that is compatible with uh, all the major platforms uh, that is web, desktop, and mobile. So this uh, framework, uh, Besides helping you to load uh, your widget, it also uh, provides you a list of predefined components, uh, predefined web components that you can add up in your widget, for example, creating a form, a button, or anything. So you use the API of this uh, framework uh, to build, uh, you can use that framework to build your uh, widget. So here, widget loaded by 3D dashboard must be a UWA widget. So that's why in the HTML, we mentioned the namespace widget uh, from NetVibes uh, to, uh, to get it configured uh, for being loaded in, a, in the proper protocol. So here, sorry, we provide you the documentation of uh, the UWA API uh, for NetVibes. You can go and check the, the different options and API that exist for that uh, for, for UWA. 
Um, another pattern I would say uh, that is important here and that is also implemented in uh, by DASU is the AMD uh, pattern. It's the asynchronous module definition pattern. To put it in simple words, it's just a module-based coding pattern. So you're, it allows you to, to program in modular uh, units. So it will help you to encapsulate logical uh, code group into useful units. And one library that will help you to uh, do that is the required JS uh, library and file loader. Required JS implements AMD, the pattern. So it will help you to manage your dependencies between JavaScript files. So uh, this, uh, this um, library have uh, in its API, it have uh, functions that help you to define uh, modules and also um, it helps you to um, import modules easily from other um, other modules that you created so this is one uh, one thing to keep in mind so um so widgets are based on javascript so today in in this day of age we have lots of javascript frameworks that exist uh, that allows us to be productive faster so just to name a few JavaScript frameworks are uh, Vue, React, uh, Angular, Next.js. I can go on and on. So there are lots of them. But those are frameworks you may consider to, uh, to implement very um, elegant uh, user interface uh, and get creative faster. So it will help you in your development process to uh, ease up the, the construction of your in user interface. And then you, you can focus on your business logic and put more time on your business logic and your business. Predefined use you are user interface component libraries. So those are just libraries that you can attach to those frameworks to, um, to have more options for building your user interface. So here you have Beautify that is uh, used with Vue. And you have other components like uh, we saw before, UWA, UIKit, and Bootstrap. So those are just uh, other components that you can add up to your framework and uh, provide more intelligent and, uh, and elegant uh, web apps. So for the business logic of your widget, so it you can use um, web services to implement the, um, the logic. So <clears throat> you have two ways of doing that. You have custom web services or you have native web services. So we always recommend uh, using uh, the existing, uh, the, the native web services that is provided by DASO because you know it will always be supported. So, um, there is a list uh, the the list of uh, of all the web services that exist in the freedx uh, web services documentation so this is the link so if you have a proper account for accessing uh, the do the developer assistance uh, documentation you will have the list of all the web services that exist you can go through it and see uh, if it meets your requirements for building the widget so if you don't have, uh, if you see that those web services are not enough for building uh, um, the functionality that you want, you may need to build the custom web services. So this is uh, applicable uh, for on-premise environment only if you are using MQL queries. MQL queries uh, the, are queries that you do in the database that allows you to do more actions on the database. So you have these two ways. Um, another uh, option that the widgets uh, allows uh, you to add um, is the widget preferences. Uh, it is uh, an option provided on all widgets that you implement. So normally here you have a widget and um, in the menu uh, here, you will have a list of options that you have for the widget. And one option is preferences. Preferences, it, uh, it provides the user uh, with some options that uh, help the user 
to manipulate the behavior of the widget. They can normally, to put that in place, you have the option, but to put preferences in place, you have to configure it. So either you configure it in your source code or you configure it in the additional app or during the creation of the additional app with a, with a JSON file format. So the, there are two options to do that. So the different types of preferences that you can add in your widget are text, boolean, password, list, range, and hidden. Hidden, uh, when you will uh, use um, this uh, preference, it won't appear uh, under preferences since it is hidden, so it's just used, uh, it will just be used in your widget code. So let's go and see the preferences. So here I have a widget that has a table and uh, here you have a type of object, the number of orders and the category of uh, your object. So those information that are filled in here are coming from preferences. I will show you just now. So to access the preferences dialog, you have to click in here and access the preferences. So in here you have uh, a list of references that was configured in the code uh, um, so that it can appear here. So you have an example of a text. So let's say for example, I can do, can change the text. I can uh, deactivate uh, this and um, and save it. And there will, there will be no uh, preferences. Um, there will be nothing uh, done on the widget uh, uh, once I deactivate the preferences, because my widget, the objective was to show those preferences. So if I go back and activate it, let's say for example, I'll change up uh, the values. Here I have a list, so I can configure uh, preferences of type list with uh, different values. And I, I do save, so then it will uh, change up the values in here. But that again needs some proper configuration and code to implement. It's just an example of using preferences in here. Okay. So another thing that uh, we've seen uh, in one slide before is uh, events uh, widgets. They react to events that are sent by the 3D dashboard. So 3D dashboard will send uh, the first event that it will send for a widget is the loading event. So some events that are supported uh, based on the UWA protocol again are a uh, load event. So it will be the unload. So when the widget is launched on the 3D dashboard, it will send this load event. Then the widget needs to capture that event and launch the proper behavior uh, that you want. You also have an on refresh event that is triggered when you refresh your widget uh, manually, be it manually or in programmatically in your code, you are refreshing the widget. You can, uh, there is another one on resize. So if you are changing the height and the width of your widget, so you can add this widget to react on that trigger also. On view change, it is uh, when the widget is uh, maximized or minimized. On keyboard action, uh, it is when uh, a key is pressed uh, within the widgets, uh, widgets area. So if you have this event captured, it will launch, uh, you, you will have, uh, you can uh, personalize the behavior that you want. And edit and unedit are related to preferences. The widget that I just showed you before about preferences uses this event. So I've added this event in the widget that will, uh, once you modify pre the preferences and click on save, it will, um, it will launch uh, the method that is configured in here and, um, and change your widget, uh, widget behavior. On edit, it is when you are doing the edit uh, of uh, the preferences when it is uh, it begins actually. So um, here, just to give you um, 
a list of APIs that uh, is uh, provided by DASO. They are inbuilt, and you can uh, require those. You can request those dependencies and add them in your widgets with the, for example, the required GS library. Um, so one uh, feature is the you can drag and drop um, uh, objects from the search result and uh, drop it in your in your widget. So the first example that we saw was using this feature of the widget where you dropped a, an object. Uh, you can uh, perform, uh, you can interact uh, between widgets that are in a, in a dashboard. You can send and receive messages. You can also have, um, uh, you have an API to make a web service call be it a uh, native or custom web service. You have uh, also APIs that allow you to interact with the search service. So once you search something, you can capture the result uh, with uh, this API. So um, normally we finish with the widget, uh, just to present you the widget fundamentals. I'll let Mark uh, share a bit about an internal project that we have currently uh, in XLM Europe. So hi, so thanks. So one of the things we are uh, developing is a, a widget to allow uh, data migrations within the cloud. Uh, for those of you that may be using 3D Experience Cloud, the data migration capabilities is limited today. And we fully understand that also the SO is providing some data migration solutions uh, to the cloud as well. But we're looking to develop our own quote unquote widget, which will support it too. So um, you see a screenshot, uh, really the slide has two purposes. One is to kind of give a heads up of one of the internal developments we're doing. But the other thing is to show a, a custom widget that we developed um, and different functionality that the widget can have. So, um, you know, I'll let Dia explain a little bit of some of the, the functionality within this widget. But, but also to let you know that we are developing a internal solution to support the uh, data migrations. Um. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yes, so just to give you um, uh, a view about the technology being used here. So we built the widget using the view framework and the Beautify library here. So the components that you see in the widget, so the first thing that you see is a stepper moving uh, that allows you to move from step one, two, three, four. So this, uh, you can just pick up uh, this uh, component from Beautify and build easily uh, uh, the content of your widget. And inside uh, you have, uh, let's say for example, a progress bar, a timeline, a view, so, and, um, like uh, smaller components that uh, regroup uh, uh, all of your all of your basic uh, UI components. So just to this is just to give you a view that uh, with those uh, with this technology, it is easier to to build those framework. You don't have to impact it and build it from scratch. So normally uh, we will communicate afterwards about the entry of in service of this uh, tool uh, afterwards in the future. So I think we we finish the session. I don't know I if there are questions. Yeah, I think there's one more. Was there one more slide, uh, Dia? Uh, sorry. sorry, yes. Yeah. So um, also, um, you know, this is just references to some of the uh, documentation from Dassault where uh, you can get information on developing widgets. Um, you know, the first link is the general help. And then, uh, you know, and then it, we have a link to the, the developers help and then specifically to the web services location regarding documentation from Dassault on, on web services. So uh, for your reference, you can see these links here that are all accessible to uh, to so customers. And then we go to the next slide. So we are also offering uh, training classes on uh, widget development and ETL programming. 
So if you want to learn more and have a more in-depth class and have uh, our experts like Dia guide you through actually creating the widgets or developing your own EKL programming, we didn't really cover EKL in this presentation, but it's another way to customize solutions within the SO platform, mainly around the uh, native client. So uh, we do offer uh, formal training on both widget development and EKL programming. And if you want to know more information, you know, please, uh, you know, see the link to get some more information or, or reach out to us per uh, info at xlmsolutions.com. And then finally, we can, uh, you know, thank you for your time. We can open it up the uh, webinar for questions. If you have questions, like I said, please type them into the questions area or within chat. Um, though we do have some questions already. The, the first question is, will this webinar be recorded? And the answer is yes. Everyone who's attending the webinar should get a copy of the recording. And if anyone needs a copy of the recording, please again, reach out to us and we can uh, provide a link to the recording. Next question, this came in through chat and D, I wasn't sure if I could answer it properly, but you, know, you mentioned creating apps and, and widgets, but does one app equal one widget or could you create like an app that has multiple widgets in it? So when you add the, the app into uh, the dashboard. So you can, it's normally one widget. So one widget is a one application. So you can have multiple widgets. If you want uh, like multiple uh, apps in the same dashboard, for example, you can create uh, different widgets that you can then plug in on, on your dashboard. So it will be considered as multiple apps in one dashboard. I don't want to uh, maybe challenge you too much, Dia, on, on uh, <laughs> the webinar, but like product structure, explore, it's right an app, but you actually get the, the 3D play, you get the two widgets with it. Is that a more of an advanced configuration or? Uh, product Explorer, actually, it's a, it's a native uh, application in 3D experience. So it comes with two, uh, when you drag and drop it on your dashboard, it comes with two uh, application being loaded. So normally uh, we haven't tried that before using custom widgets, but I think this is possible if we would uh, we want to load two widgets, it can be customized. Okay, great. Um, next question it mentioned, if we wanted to create a custom web service, can we use MQL to help create that custom web service? And I believe it was you know, answered, but, but yes, for on-premise implementations, um, you can make use of MQL in a custom web service, but if you're developing a widget for the cloud, you cannot make use of MQL. Let me see, we've got some more questions here. Uh, do widget support drag and drop from other 3D experience apps? And, and the answer is yes, it does. Um, in our revision uh, updating widget, we, sh we showed an example of drag and drop and there's an events when programming the widget to uh, support the drag and drop. As long as you have a droppable uh, element in your widget, so whatever is dragged uh, from elsewhere can be dropped in the widget. Uh, here's a question, Dia. Uh, have, have um, what JavaScript framework have you used to develop widgets? I don't know if you want to you know we talked about what Can what you, ja JavaScript framework, like I assume like uh, Angular or uh, have you so used on, uh, widgets? On XLM solution side, I know there is a, a widget developed, uh, there are widgets developed in Angular. And on our side, we are developing, we're mainly focusing on view framework and uh, also just uh, java any um, any framework i think uh, it's uh, once you know uh, you have the knowledge of javascript you can build up uh, you can choose any framework that you would want great um 
Great. Uh, next question. Uh, have you ever hosted the code and access directly from GitHub? So we are, I mean, we've used internal code management repository systems to, to manage our own code. Um, the platform, you know, has, you know, software integration hooks um, and roles, you know, licensed roles that you can buy to integrate with repositories like GitHub. Um, today, we're not doing anything public on GitHub, but, you know, for users that are curious about the code, um, again, you know, please reach out to me and, and perhaps we can arrange something. Um, next question how do widgets compare to things like the integration framework where do the limitations lie with widgets versus eif so eif or integration framework is a way to integrate data with other systems like uh, erp systems um, integration framework is event-based so it, it gets triggered based on an event in 3d experience like we look change state to release um, um, and, and other events, um, you know, change state being the key event. So when that event happens, code is triggered and it's similar web services code, like a widget is calling to do something where a widget is more. And so that's more, I'd say, non-user interactive. The event happens in 3D experience and, and the code runs, i.e copy the data to uh, ERP. Where a widget is more interactive and controlled by the user, so the user would, you know, quote unquote, drag their data into the widget and then have a user interface to do whatever that customization needed. So um, there, there's a lot of similarities there. There's a lot of behind the scenes web service calls that are the same, but uh, integration framework is more event-based and happens, let's say, behind the scenes, for widgets is probably more user uh, interactions. Uh, there's a question about, you know, when, you know, when are you having more trainings? We talked about the trainings. Um, again, right now there's, they're more on demand. So if you're interested in training, please reach out and we could schedule classes and, and talk about, um, you know, costs associated to it. Uh, can you synchronize a widget to um, to respond sim simultaneously to the same triggering event? So that's that's probably something we'll need more research on. Um, um, you know, there are events that listen. I uh, so uh, probably, uh, I know Selma, you asked that, you know, maybe reach out directly and we can talk about that in more detail or do some more research, you know, how a, a trigger event could interact with a widget. Um, is it possible to interact with widgets on native client through CAA framework? Um, I'm not sure if the so has exposed any interfaces, but curious. So, um, I know through the native client, you can, you know, launch widgets, but really are launching it in its own little web session and work with it. And I think you can support drag and drop from, you know, uh, properties in the native client tree to, to a widget. Um, so I think there is some interaction between the native client and the widget. I don't know, Dia, if you have anything more to say about mm -hmm. that. Um, I never tried it before, but uh, need a, need like you said, need to research more and see if it, this is possible. Yeah. So if you if you're interested in more, again, please reach out uh, directly to us, and we can research it with you in more detail. That looks like all the questions for now. I hope I addressed everyone's questions. If not, as mentioned. Um, our contact information is on the screen, and we hope you found this uh, webinar interested, interesting. Um, if you have ideas for more webinars, you know, please let us know. We'd be happy to present them. And um, once again, thank you for attending. So we'll leave the uh, webinar on for another minute if any more questions come in.
but then uh, we will close it and uh, and please reach out for any additional questions. Thank you again. All right, I'm officially ending in the webinar. Thank you once again.